we are starting uh, let me first tell you that today's uh, the talk is with reference to hr as a career choice for transitioning officers of the uniformed services it's a uh, it's a very uh, compelling pathway to capitalize on their unique skills leadership experiences and dedication to service with a background steeped in teamwork discipline and uh, adaptability we as armed forces veterans bring a wealth of transferable skills to hr roles making them valuable assets to organizations seeking to cultivate diverse and resilient teams embracing the principles of hr allows veterans to continue their commitment to supporting and empowering others while also embarking on a fulfilling and impactful civilian career path that aligns with their values and expertise good evening i am group captain munish sharma an indian air force veteran having served the organization in various capacities including administration hr finance and it for 35 years i have now started a financial consultancy where we guide individuals on management of personal finance including investments risk management and compliances we also provide management compliances and accounting services to businesses as well today with me is lieutenant colonel mayur ambasht who is an alumni of national defense academy pune and indian military academy dehradun he was commissioned into the 10th battalion of the mechanized infantry regiment in december 1999 he served in various appointments in the field and the peace including a un mission in sudan where he commanded 200 troops with 30 tanks in the midst of an intense civil war in south sudan during his military career spanning uh, 20 years he was operated in jammu and kashmir where he was deployed in intense counter insurgency operations for 3 to 10 years haryana punjab rajasthan madhya pradesh maharashtra and africa his career in indian army encompassed roles <clears throat> including operations hr training administration and financial management He is an uh, MBA from Narsi Monji Institute of Management Studies. He hung his uniform in February 2020, and has been employed as head HR, Hyosung TNS, since April 2020 at Mumbai. He has been instrumental in creating an efficient system and a conducive and happy environment for his team. Apart from being a committed HR professional. he is also an avid blogger and passionately exposes the cause of veteran hiring he has successfully launched initiatives to organize and network veterans to further their placements and growth after their transition from boots to suits as he calls he is a prolific content creator on social media and pursues reinforcing brand veteran to these channels I welcome Lieutenant Colonel Mayur. Thank you, sir. Privilege being here. Uh, there are certain skill sets which uh, military veterans acquire uh, during the course of their duty. They are uh, more of soft skill, uh, which are you know, like a transferable skill, we can say. So, uh, how do they become uh, more valuable, or can they be? Uh, no projected as a valuable skill like you know we're talking about Absolutely. say something communication problem solving or decision making can these be leveraged uh, when somebody is applying for the... sir trust me uh, these are very valued skills in the corporate world and uh, unfortunately or i would say fortunately for veterans these are not very common also to be found in a single person a defense officer generally an average defense officers will have communication skills soft skills crisis management skills problem solving then you know uh, he can draft an sop in minutes for a, any process he can define a process in a very logical fashion 
he will have very very logical uh, decision making uh, approach he will always follow uh, procedures he will always keep the you know boundaries and lines in mind he will have a flair for man management all these skills to be found in a single person in corporate is slightly difficult so that is a plus point for veterans and definitely can be leveraged as long as you are able to bring it out firstly on your resume and secondly on in your interview you can leverage something only as long as you display it. if you don't uh, mention these things on your resume and you don't uh, ensure that your answers during the interview bring out these skills in some of the other fashion so say i mean just quoting an example because people wonder how do i do that uh, there is always a question you know in the interview okay tell me something about yourself generally the first question i have seen even i take interviews now it's it's a first question to gauge the you know set the tone for interview and gauge the communication skills of the person generally people are prepared for it so if you are going to be prepared for such a question it's a very commonly asked question you better frame an answer which gives out your communication skills where you say as much in as many words that i possess these skills and in the subsequent answers you bring out these skills in some other other manner by quoting an incident by your experiential learning and all that you can bring up then you can leverage you have the skills but you can't display them or uh, adapt them to the corporate requirements then probably you can't leverage them so that is what i can uh, say as my opinion about this okay and uh, what is a typical uh, career path or promotional or growth path for an hr professional that uh, you know a veteran should expect <laughs> when moving along the career so as i said sir the take off level will not be the same when you consider the three categories of uh, ss pmr and superannuating officers so career paths will also be different but say if i take ss officers for example they can start with probably after upskilling of course they can start with the probably head of a particular sub vertical in a medium size company uh, as i mentioned earlier say head of l and d or head of talent acquisition and hone up his skills in that department while keeping his eyes and ears open about the other sub verticals too and keep upskilling upgrading wherever he finds the vacuums later graduate to probably a business unit hr and then a chro so growth here uh, when you talk about the career path the growth is uh, generally defined in, in two parts one is the financial aspect and one is the responsibility and the stature so financial aspect inevitably you get a certain percentage increase every year even if you don't skip jobs but as far as the stature is concerned that will happen only if you uh, demonstrate your skills in a particular uh, role at a level you will be picked up for higher responsibilities if you don't uh, see that happening in the current organizations when you switch jobs you select a role which is at a higher pedestal and that is how your career keeps increasing so you were managing uh, say learning and development for a headcount of 100 or 200 next job you look for a role where you manage at least 500 people and so on and thereafter you manage hr for probably 500 people and then you aim that okay after 20 years of work in hr domain i might land up a role as a chr worker something like that and if you superimpose this on a pmr officer similarly take off level will be different but then those expertise will have to be developed in a in a quicker manner to reach the higher pedestal slightly faster so that is how the career progression will take place i i hope i have explained it in a understandable numbers yeah but uh, that leads to another question sir which i think everybody would be keen to know what is the generally i mean if there any benchmarks available general salary and other monetary compensation one can expect as a hr professional sir uh, this is a very common question asked by all veterans that you know the question is like uh, ki what what is what should a lieutenant colonel accept uh, or expect as ctc sir uh, you see the corporate is not deciding the salary as per your rank or experience 
it is deciding a salary for that particular role that particular job and if i may say so the corporate decides uh, on the salary aspect based on the return on the investment in that role say just a fictitious example if i am taking a person in sales i don't care how old he is if i expect that this guy will give me a crore worth of uh, income in one year then i can possibly give him 30 lakh rupees then 30 lakh if i give him cash he will roam around do certain expenses and all that he'll spend another 10 to 15 lakh air tickets hotel and you know seminars webinars and whatever uh, marketing effort i'll have to give him an office and laptop and what not on his transportation and everything so okay i spent 50 lakh on him still you know he is giving me an income of so i have spent 50 lakh but he is giving me 1 crore in return viable how do i care whether he was a squad leader or group captain or air commodore doesn't matter to me that 1 crore is not going to change because there is a product there is a market and whether it is a captain or a general he can sell only that much so that kind of benchmarking is incorrect to expect uh, i would suggest a different approach firstly it is the size of the company and nature of the role which will uh, decide the salary uh, and it will not be as per your age and experience in defense uh, secondly you decide a benchmark for yourself i want a role which is not below this much thereafter you check that benchmark for its responsibilities in the industry that a person who gets probably 35 lakhs or 40 lakhs has to do a b c d and e i should be able to do those five and then target the jobs which require you to do a b c d and e when you see a jd it has got only a b and c then you assume that i am not going to get 40 lakhs because it is asking me to do less than what a 40 lakh guy you know gets in the industry okay. you select jds which demand more from you you are actually ensuring that they will pay you more that is how the mechanism will work because you take my appointment as an hr head or a chro if the company has got 100 people the salary will be less if that guy is managing 500 the salary will be more if it is a ac office plush environment uh, and only in one location the salary will be less but if the workforce is split into five stations uh, 50 each in uh, ncr bombay pune chennai hyderabad and calcutta naturally the stress is more the work pressure is more so salary will be more so the dynamics have to be worked out accordingly even when you start negotiating you should ask for all these factors before you say yes or no. Uh, to quote a crude example, uh, when you go to buy apples, the guy quotes you a rate without showing you the apples. Will you buy? Pale save the cow. I'll see how fresh they are, whether they are pink or red or you know shiny. Then Correct. I'll decide whether I'll accept your rate. Correct. So same has to be done. You are shopping for a appointment. So please be uh, like a good shopper. <laughs> check the check the goods, check the wares before you say yes or no. So that is my suggestion to the veterans. These are things which we don't come across while in uh, defense forces, but one has to get used to this system now because we have chosen to come out, correct? So correct. we better adapt to what is prevalent outside. So it may not be palatable to a lot of people, but that is how it is, facts of life. I, I hope I explained the thing yes, adequately. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm finding it uh, quite interesting the way you're putting it across, and I'm sure uh, there are a lot of hands going up. But uh, just yeah, for yeah, I just audience. noticed. So we'll address I'm, the questions, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We'll address the questions from your side also. Don't worry. We'll be towards the end of the talk. We will yeah. be doing it. So I just want to know there, like in armed forces, there are a lot of uh, non-tangible benefits. I mean, if we can, I can put it in the right words. Yeah. So, do you have uh, some similar kind of uh, non-tangible benefits which increase the work satisfaction of uh, 
the armed forces people going into this domain per se? Sir, it all depends on your employer uh, and the culture uh, uh, of the organization. You must have always heard that you know Tatas are very good uh, as far as employee satisfaction, engagement, and welfare is concerned. Mm -hmm. What happens is that certain uh, brands and companies have got this uh, culture of you know enhancing and empowering their employees. They'll give you always opportunities to learn, uh, to do courses, to enhance your skills, uh, to get uh, new opportunities. They'll post you from place A to B, and your career planning will be very meticulous because they are a very large organization they can afford to do so. Uh, but I would say the percentage of such employers is at the most 20 to 25 percent. 75 percent uh, industry is brutally profit oriented. So welfare uh, comes last in every time. Chetwood reversed. <laughs> so <laughs> it is it is not like that. Unfortunate, but uh, no. Uh, Non-tangible benefits are less, less. I will not say zero, but less in the industry. It is a brutal fact. People may uh, actually uh, uh, ostracize me for saying all this, but it is a fact of life. We are speaking amongst veterans. Uh, veterans should know what they are going in for. Thank you, Mayur. I mean, uh, as they say in HR, they don't just hire employees. They build teams, cultivate talent, and shape the future of organization. On yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind.